Illustrator 2021 has now got a grid feature, a really useful grid feature. I have to say it's not as easy, I think, to use as the radial feature of the repeat. But I will show you. Obviously, here's an example here. And I'm just going to remove that. So what I'm going to do, just going to create just a very easy circle. Now, with that circle, what you can do, you can go to Object Menu. And like I said, this is 2021. That's the key thing. Doesn't work in 2020, 2019. This feature is not there. So repeat and grid. So you've got that. That's all it does. Actually, this is slightly the thing that makes it slightly harder to use because it creates a very small design there. Now, I'm just going to go up to up here to the selection tool and resize so you can see the design there. Now, that resizes the circle itself. Obviously, it also the grid itself, but it hasn't increased the number. Now, to increase the number, you can put these little options here. Also, key panel here is properties. So you've got here window and properties. If I go all the way down here to properties, and you can see repeat options. And you can modify the settings here, modify the type here. There's a number of different types, brick by row and brick by column. You can see you can create some very different sort of like polka dot designs. So but I'm going to go with this one first. So then you can also flip row. Obviously, it doesn't really make any difference in this one, in this case. So I'm going to, and also there's other features there as well. But you've got these features to increase the numbers as well. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly show you, you can increase them. And you can see as you modify that, you get more of them appearing. Now, of course, if you go too far, they overlap. So, of course, it depends what you want from this. So you can just get this. So you can just get it about there. Or you can you can also do the other as well, because you can see here is another option. So you can just again, and as you do that, you can see you've got the option here. You've got a little sort of the space in between them. And again, you can just make it very, very small. And now, if you want to see more, you can just use this and it will reveal more. Obviously, it's all underneath or all the side. It's all around. Now, if you want to move it around, I'm just going to move it up, up to there so you can see it a bit better. And again, you can just continue to move that down so you can see this design here. Now, again, what you can do, just click here, brick by row, and you can see the brick by row. Just gives it a nice sort of shift. Long. Or this one, brick by column. Up to you. But I'm just going to default to that one. Just it's easier just to continue with that example. Now what you can do, you can double click on the design, just select one of those circles. And this can be done with any path. So you don't have to say so double click and then you can modify that. And as soon as you modify it, you can see obviously you're going to get more because I've decreased the size. And also what you can do, of course, I can change the fill. Maybe make it yellow. I can also change the stroke. Maybe make it, sometimes it doesn't always straight away work. I've done it a couple of times where I've suddenly thought, I've applied it, but it hasn't done anything. And you can change your opacity. So you can see you made that fade away. And you can do that. Now you're in this, you can go into isolation mode. You can come out of that, simply just go up here to the top left and click there and you're outside again and you've got your design there. Now, if you decide, you know what, I don't want circles, I want something else inside there. Again, what you can do, now you've of course got, still got all this, but you can double click just one of the entries and you can modify any of them. Just modify any of the designs and you see they all will do exactly the same thing. And of course, you can say so squeeze it like that. Maybe rotate it. Maybe go to edit and object and what's one wanted? Object and transform and rotate. So maybe go for 45. Click OK. And so you can see you can create all kinds of different designs. And not only that, you can of course always use other tools such as curvature tool and you can modify it. So you just simply change things there you can add a new point there and you can see as you do that it will change for all of the other points now i don't want that one 
I'm just going to go back to the standard circle. So you've got that circle. But of course, what you can also do while you're in this, you're still in this isolation mode, you can actually duplicate the design. So I'm just going to hold down the alter option key and duplicate. So you can see now you've got this, and I'm going to change the color of that. So let's go up to the fill here and I'll go for red. So you can see you can create some very unusual, very, very quick designs like that. And you can, of course, move that around. Put it there. You can see you've got a lovely uh, polka dot design again, simply by doing that. And of course, you don't have to keep it a circle. You can always change that. And you can always add another design. So you don't have to have, you can go for a rectangle. And you can put it there. Strange, not what I was expecting. I was expecting, oh, because I put it quite a way away. You've got to do it within that area, otherwise it will obviously put it further over, which makes it slightly wrong. So you definitely always got to remember that area is where you've got to edit it. And again, it's actually slightly odd in the sense that it would be nice to be able to see in terms of maybe if they could fade the others away. Unfortunately, that does make it slightly hard. It would be a nice feature if it's sort of like faded so you can see which one you're editing in this isolation mode. Slightly tricky. And then, of course, you can also add other things as well. You may be a few things, you know what, I want some type. So I'm just going to go up here, type tool, and I can add some type. So Lauren, and it's repeated again all the way through. Now I can come out, and then I've got my design there. And I can still reveal more or less. And also I can, of course, rotate it. Now it rotates the whole thing. And also you can increase or decrease, obviously change the spacing. And you can create those sort of designs. And of course, what you can also do, if you double click again, you can edit it and you can see the design there. It's giving you that little block. You can, of course, select an individual design, maybe go to like effects and maybe use 3D, probably create a slight slow design. So blur, Gaussian blur. And you can see, just blur that, click OK. And actually that seems to unfortunately have slightly uh, unusual effects. So maybe that unfortunately is something that uh, should be avoided. So undo Gaussian blur and you go back to that. That's very weird. Maybe there's a slight Slight issue there, or maybe my misunderstanding of it. However, but you can apply effects. Of course, you can apply effects to the whole thing. Also, what you can do, once you're happy with everything, you can always go to up here. Actually, I'm going to just quickly try these ones as well. You can actually go here again just to see the change. That's just using the brick and brick by column. Um, actually, I think personally that's just as good as well. And of course, if you want to expand it, what you can do, object, menu, and expand. And that's it. You've got it back to just a standard design there. Now what you can do, and I'm just going to quickly do grid, and I'm just going to, this time I'm just going to use sort of, now what you can do, you could probably fill it with something, maybe create multiple shapes first time around. So I'm just going to create uh, there, maybe change that to green, and then of course with that selected, just put that inside there. And again, what you can do, go to object, and down to repeat and grid. And you can see you've got your grid there. Reveal more, reveal less, move that up there. And you can see you create all kinds of unique grids very quick and easy. Now, of course, what you can also do, you can expand it again, of course. Now, I haven't tried this, so maybe it's a feature. You can go to object and repeat and grid. If you select radial, interesting to see what would be nice would be it would actually go and create a radial one as well. Yes, it does. Ooh, that is pretty good. Though now becomes slightly confusing. Though you can expand that out. I must admit, I was not expecting it to do that. I hadn't tried that. I just suddenly thought about that while I was just doing this. And again, if I double click now, on one of those sections. Oh, it's actually still lets me edit the thing here, which is quite nice. Now, I wonder if I can, so I can double click on that, so I can select that and edit that one design there. And you can see what happens. It edits all of it, the radial as well as the grid. That's quite useful. And again, you now find you, you've got a gr radial repeat, grid repeat, so it makes it more complex. And of course, you probably could do 
a grid of the radial of the grid. I probably won't be trying that, but uh, it's possible. And you can come all the way out again. And again, you can modify this setting. And you can see you can create all kinds of different designs like that. And you can modify the number of repeats. So maybe you don't want that. You may want just four. And you can see you create a, like a very quick and easy frame design using this approach. And of course, what you can also do, and there is an option for this, and if I can see it, ah, oh, now I'm just going to resize that so I can actually see it, because sometimes, of course, it goes off. There's this option here, and you've got a little, and you can actually remove. So if you don't want all of them, you can actually remove that one. So that one will disappear. So you can just create three. That one's suddenly completely, and you'll notice it says three there. So that's a real great way of grid, radial, etc. So remove that. And I say, you can use type. I've actually done a tutorial with type with the radial. So I'm going to just quickly try it here. Otherwise, I'd just do hundreds of uh, videos. It's just as easy just to quickly show here. So type, and again, object, and go down to repeat, and grid. And you can see the grid there. Very quick and easy way of adding additional type. You, of course, can resize it. And if you want to, just double click on that and you can see you could edit the type, resize it there, rotate it, and also change the color. Go for red. And if you want, you can always duplicate that design, hold down the alter option key. So you've got two entries there. And then maybe change the color to black. And so on and so on. And again, what you can do, you can still continue to modify that. You can just change all the settings there. Try these. Oh, so flip row does work now. When I was doing before, no difference, obviously, when it was circle. But now you can see that it definitely clearly gives you even more options in terms of creating some more interesting different type designs. It obviously requires something that's not a uniform design, like a circle is not going to be very much good with flips and things. But obviously, when you've got something slightly more complex, like a rectangle, then it obviously gives that it's more useful. And again, you can still continue to show more or increase the spacing and those sorts of things. And again, what you can do, you can also go and add effects to the whole thing and much, much more. And again, just before finish, you can also go and select circle or square or whatever and add a brush stroke to it. As, of course, other things as well. There's obviously more than just that. And the reason I mentioned brush strokes is because I've got some brushes here. Now, these are the Elegant Curl and Floral Brush Set. And I'm just going to change the colour. That makes it easy to see that design. I'm just going to change the that stroke. I'm just going to make that black and just there. And then I'm just going to add... And you can see you can obviously add, now of course you can tweak the brush stroke. I've just obviously done this very quick, but you can see like that brush there. And once you've done that, what you can do, of course you can then go to object menu and down here to repeat. Slightly tucked away, I must admit, one thing always slightly bugs me and it's a minor issue maybe for some people, it would be nice in these different sections, it would be nice if they ordered it in alphabetical order. But I guess maybe then it would complicate it even maybe with different foreign languages or something. They've just gone for, I'm not certain what the order is at all. Maybe it's just obviously usefulness, maybe. Though I must admit, I have, don't think I ever use shape ever. So um, obviously you use pattern a lot, but don't use, uh, you know, I use quite a few of those ones quite a lot. And yet they're right down the bottom. Just pointed that out. It's just odd where they put it repeat there. So grid. And you can see your grid now like that. And again, you can vary the size. And you can reveal more. Also, it just always puts it down there. So I'm just going to move that up so you can see the design there. Obviously, expand that out. So you can see you can use brushes. Now, if I apply the brush now, it will apply it not in the way that I want it. So I'm just going to double click on that again. And then what I can do, I can then go to one of these ones. I'm just going to select one like that. And you can see you can change. You can create all kinds of very unusual designs. And of course, it's still live, still. So you can go back, just go up here and press return. 
and you've got your design there, which of course you can work with maybe of course razor again if you wanted to do that. Now also you of course can do brush strokes themselves. So maybe select a brush and I'm just going to select very quickly. So you've got that well, maybe not that quick, but say a brush stroke, something like that. There's a brush. So you've got your design there. It's obviously just a standard path there with a brush applied. Could be any brush because it comes with lots of brushes. What you can then do, of course, is object again, go down to repeat and grid. And again, you can see you've got your grid applied there. Just move that so you can see all the, the brushes there. And again, of course, what you can do, you can go to the properties and you've got this grid type. So you can change here, there and column. So you can tweak, go through those, change the spacing. So if you want, you can make it a lot closer. And also you can go full flip and you create a whole load of different designs simply by doing that. So that's quite a useful feature with brush strokes. And of course, with brush strokes, what you can do again, you can go to there, double click on one of those and you can change it. So you can tweak that, make it smaller. And it of course modifies as you do that. You may want it wider, smaller, and of course what you can do, you can change the colours and all those sorts of things, apply effects, and much, much more. So, come out of that. Well, I hope you found this tutorial about the grid feature. This is an Illustrator 221 of interest. I'm always adding new tutorials about Illustrator, Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Painter, Critter, and many, many others. Also, Please add some comments, always appreciate it. If you, there's something that I haven't explained well, or maybe something you think, oh, it'd be nice if you show how to do this or do that. I see if I can do it. Obviously, I'll do another tutorial. Um, also, uh, I say other comments, always appreciated. A dislike or like as well. Thank you much.